Today we're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and their upcoming issues at the quarterback position. Obviously they've had Kenny Pickett for the last uh, two years now and well there's questions surrounding him. Then they bring in Mason Rudolph as the third string quarterback after Mitch Trubisky does a terrible job at playing the game of quarterback and Mason Rudolph does a pretty good job. So what does the Pittsburgh Steelers have to look forward to in the quarterback position? I'll show you in this video. Just before we get started though, I'd like you to please remember to pl hit that like button, that subscribe button helps my channel out a ton and I'm trying to hit 1,000 subs by the end of February and when I do, I will do a jersey giveaway. Also, um, I'll check out my podcast Tuesday Night Takes. It has been posted twice now. Um, haven't done it in the last two weeks because I've been in the hospital with my son who was recently born. Um, so yeah, check it out and keep my family in your prayers. Either way, let's get into this video. The Pittsburgh Steelers obviously drafted Kenny Pickett with their first round pick in 2022. And this was supposed to be the guy who came in after Ben Roethlisberger and succeeded him to great things. I mean, you've had Ben Roethlisberger for 18 years and it's time to move on. It's time to find a new guy. This guy came from Pitt. He's the home, uh, home field guy and let's get a lot out of him. So Matt Canada being a part of the issue was the biggest problem in my opinion. Let's get right into his features of this team. The Matt Canada offense was just not a good one. 24-19-1 while he was the coordinator. Under Ben Roethlisberger, they were 22nd and 29th in rushing and passing, or in total yards per game. Passing yards per game, they were 15th, but that's pretty much strictly because of Ben Roethlisberger's late game drives. Um, and they obviously see the stats on the right side of what they were over the entire period. Um, and... Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett in 2022 weren't much better. They were better in rushing, but worse in passing and pretty much average the same. But then 2023 under Kenny Pickett, the worst yards per game they've been, uh, 31st in passing yards per game and 29th in total points per game. They also only had 79 total touchdowns, which was 31st in the whole span of Matt Canada and only the poor New York Jets have less. Now that's pretty problematic because you're already not putting up yards, but you're also not even scoring points. You have this good defense and they're setting you up taking turnovers. They've been really good at that the last few years, but you're not capitalizing on it with points the whole time. Once Matt Canada left, you get Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan as the offensive coordinators. And under games with Pickett or Rudolph, they did pretty good. 24 points per game, almost 400 yards per game, 238 passing yards per game, and 155 rushing yards. That's a pretty good offensive output. And people might talk about how Mason Rudolph did three versus Kenny was one, but they really, the stats were the same in both games. Looking at this, I want to highlight Kenny Pickett's game versus Cincinnati, the only game he played outside of the Matt Canada system. He was pretty good. He had 73% completion, 278 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but 8.4 yards per carry. Had a PFF grades that were really high and a solid time to throw. It wasn't like he was getting tons of tons of time. And the adjusted passer rating is something that it's based on the accurate throws plus the drops and completion. So like it kind of gives up the receiver part of it. But 97.8 rating overall, not to say PFF grades are a big deal, but they are still a thing to at least look at and see what they got. However, PFF don't trust things they say in general. Either way, Kenny had a good game versus Cincinnati, and we see that followed up by Mason's games against the other three teams. In a Kenny versus Mason scenario, just basing this off of the games they played, the, the stats are actually better for Kenny outside of points. Okay, yeah, they didn't put the ball in the end zone. That's something you do want. They also turned the ball over one time in uh, the one game. However, for Mason, they only turned the ball over one or twice, excuse me, in one game in so they there was there was turnovers in the first two games that didn't count this is something that goes massively massively overlooked people aren't talking about how Kenny Pickett had a really good few couple games he did a lot of good things like I said the passing yards are 40 more yards per game or the that game excuse me he had a three less rushing yards on average and he had more total yards I mean what are we what are we talking about here it's and yes both games against Cincinnati were pretty big outputs and you're able to kind of match those two up. However, it's just, it's not super different. They're, they're both good games. Kenny played well without Matt Canada as well. However, let's take a look at how good Mason Rudolph did do between the last three weeks of the season. This is only including quarterbacks with minimum of 70 snaps. So there's 25, 29, excuse me, qualifiers for these statistics. He was first in completion percentage, 
first in yards per attempt. So it wasn't like he was just throwing a lot of checkdowns, a lot of running back screens, anything like that. The adjusted percentage, um, as you see here, is the percent of a aimed passes thrown on target. Uh, he was second in the league. He was very, very accurate. He had no drops. Uh, the drop percentage was low, which means he's getting the ball to his receivers. The passer rating is 120, which was third in the league. And he had not even that much time to throw. 24th out of 29 guys in time to throw. That's not really that great. He's on the lower end. He just means he's getting the ball out and putting it on time on target. So with that said, the Steelers do end up going with Rudolph into Week 18. Pickett was healthy. However, they give Mason the ball, and Mason gets the win over Baltimore to get them into the playoffs. Um, he's also given the starting job in the playoffs, which was, you know, maybe a questionable decision. However, where did this come from? This is my, my question here. What did Mason do prior to this to even deserve this? Uh, from 2019 to 2022, he played 17 games. A lot of that was in the year that Ben Roethlisberger was hurt. He, in those 17 games, had 2,400 yards, 16 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, and a 61.5% completion percentage. Not a very good output. However, one thing I'd like to point out is the fact that during this time, Mason Rudolph wasn't particularly getting all the snaps in practice. He wasn't being the main focal point in practice, getting the reps. And, you know, during the year Ben Roethlisberger got hurt, he probably wasn't expecting to play much. Then he gets thrown into one game, and then the next game he gets knocked out by Earl Thomas, mixes a few games, goes back in for Duck Hodges, and there's just a wishwash of Duck Hodges, Mason Rudolph, back and forth, back and forth, all the way until the whole season was just kind of not a very pretty sight. The biggest question fans have had since this has happened was, should Tomlin have started Mason earlier? And the Steelers are a loyal organization. The fans, they, they turned on Pickett pretty harshly in this, but Mason was never a real option before this. Let's just be real. He never showed enough in camp or practice just to rise above Mitch Trubisky, who didn't play well. And I, I just don't think Tomlin made a mistake. There's not certainty that Mason Rudolph played well. And here's the thing. Like I said, you lose the Canada play calling, the Canada issues. And not to say that all the offensive uh, flaws fall onto Matt Canada, but... Once you lost Matt Canada's play calling, the offense got better as a whole, whether it be Kenny Pickett, whether it be Mason Rudolph. I would even be interested to see how well Mitch Trubisky plays in the same system that those two got to play in. Not to say he'd be good because he just doesn't look very good as a quarterback, but I still think he'd have a better output than what he did in this season. The futures of the Steelers quarterback, I mean, they obviously ended up losing in the playoffs to Buffalo and Kenny will be back. He's on the roster. He's on contract. So Mason will be a targeted free agent, but will they draft a quarterback? I mean, there's early round rookies, but I really severely doubt they go that route. Uh, then you got the late round guys, Jordan Travis, Michael Pratt, Spencer Rattler, Keaton Slovis, and Talia Tagovailoa. Could they nab one of those guys in the fourth, fifth, sixth round to try and make sure they get something of value? There's also veteran free agents like Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, and Baker Mayfield. Personally, as a Steelers fan, I wouldn't mind them going and trying to see what Russ can do, seeing what Cousins can do, or Baker. However, not so much Ryan Tannehill, not really interested in his talents right now. So here's my take on the whole case. Kenny Pickett has played a year and a half. Typically, you give quarterbacks three full years to give it their best shot. And he's not done that. He's only played a year and a half. The team, they're going to give him support as long as he doesn't just run out on the team. He, they're going to. They drafted him in the first round. He's only played a year and a half. They know that. I don't think they benched him. I think they just kept going with Mason. I don't think it was anything on Kenny. I think it was all on Mason's down or his upside than Kenny's downside. He will face competition this year, however. Mason Rudolph is a free agent, but if they bring him back, they will be facing competition. They will give him a shot. He played well in his only game without Matt Cannon, as I've said, but Tomlin, like I said, was forced to ride this hot hand outside of the season, and like he's going to be back. Just 100%, Kenny Pickett will be on the Steelers roster this coming year. He will be in training camp competing for the number one spot, whether it be against an outside veteran, Mason Rudolph, or some rookie like Jordan Travis, Keaton Slovis, or whoever else. It, this is just what it's going to be in Pittsburgh. Either way, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your takes on this Pittsburgh Steelers team going into next season. I feel like this is going to be a super important offseason for the Pittsburgh franchise. And either way, make sure I hit that like button, that subscribe button, and let me know if you like these videos, and I will do more of them, as I've already done one before about Justin Fields. Either way, I'll see you on the next video.